Hi guys, so I get a lot of questions about Kendall's G-Tube. What's in G-Tube? How does it work? Do you have to clean it every day? How do you clean it? What do you clean it with? Um, how do you prime it? I get a ton of questions. So today I am going to show you guys how I feed Kendall with the G-Tube and how I clean it and everything like that. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Oh, get it all out. Oh, are you gonna talk? You wanna talk to everybody? Yay! So first we wanted to answer some questions. So one of the questions is, what is a G-tube? So a G-tube is a little passageway right here is Kendall's. It's like a little button that goes into your tummy and that's how you get fed maybe all your meals or maybe just some of your meals, it depends. So one of the questions we do get a lot is how do you clean it? So lucky for me, my surgeon that performed the surgery on her gave us the pamphlet that tells us exactly how to do it. So I'm just gonna read exactly word for word. So wash your hands prior to starting, wash the G-tube site around with, or wash the G-tube site with betadine solution two times using a cotton swab. And then after washing with betadine, clean with rubbing alcohol two times using a cotton swab. And then apply antibiotic ointment to opening if recommended by doctor, which we did actually have to use some for a little bit, but only about like a week or two. And then it was, we didn't need it anymore. So that's awesome. And then apply a split gauze to the skin around the area until the skin is healed, usually six weeks. So obviously we don't do this part anymore because it's been well over six weeks. So I don't have any split gauze, but it's like a square of gauze. So like two inches and two inches with a cut split in the middle that you just wrap around the G-tube. Now we use a G-tube pad. All it does really is just kind of keeps things off of the site and keeps it cleaner, absorbs any leakage, which we don't have much anymore, but we used to have a ton before. So that's how you clean the site of the area. I actually showed it in one of my videos of kind of me just rubbing around it. And one of the comments I got off of that is, does it burn her? I get what you're saying, because it was like bubbling around the site. It didn't burn her, it doesn't burn her. Um, if I was holding her, she wouldn't even been crying. We do that a lot actually, but it's hard for me to hold the camera and all that jazz. So imagine it like a piercing. So you know you have your, like your ears pierced or your belly button pierced. You can put things in and out of it after it's all healed and it doesn't hurt. You don't really notice it. That's how a G-tube site is. At least that's how a nurse described it to me to help me, I guess, calm down because the thought of it just did not sit right with me because I don't know, it just didn't. Another question I get a lot is can Kendall pull on it? Does she pull on it? Does she like mess with it? So with Kendall, she doesn't really have the mobility in her hands to open her hands and grab something yet. Her hands are pretty much closed. If I put my, oh, hiccups. But if I put my finger in her hand, she will squeeze and stuff, but we, she doesn't, she just can't grab. So for us, luckily the tube isn't that big of a deal. Um, and anyways, this part can come in and out like I usually take it out at least once a day. I replace them a lot. I clean them a lot. So this does come out. So if she did have that problem, I would just re I would just take the extension out completely and just have her have her little button out. But I do hear a lot of stories and I know some parents who have kids that just love to pull on them. So it is an issue. So one of the questions I get a lot is why is she eating a bottle while she has a G-tube or why does she sometimes take a bottle? Why does she sometimes use a tube? Well, it's completely up to Kendall. So if she doesn't want to eat during a feed or won't finish a bottle, we'll just put the rest through the G-tube. If she is sleeping and she didn't sleep at all the night before, I'll just put it in the G-tube. But usually it's, yeah, completely all up to Kendall. <laughs> I just put Kendall in here so I can get everything ready and I can tell she is getting hungry. She keeps trying to chew on her hand. So let's go make her uh, lunch. <laughs> um, I already cleaned this bag. It still has water in it. Whoop. I just put it back so I know where it is every time. Okay, so this is everything I'm going to need. Oh, goodness. 
Okay, so I just hooked up the bag onto the IV pole type of thing. I have my pump right here, but also I need to prime this tube, meaning I'm gonna put all of the formula into this tube because not, right now it just has air and a little bit of water from the leftover cleaning. So I need to do that because I don't want air in Kendall's tummy because that's very uncomfortable, obviously. So right now, as you can, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little teardrop right there. I'm gonna squeeze it right there and I'm gonna squeeze the bag. You can see the formula priming through the tube. Just a little bit of water is coming out. It's okay, I have a wash rag like right underneath it. <laughs> so I'm gonna prime it until there's no air in it because we don't want Kendall to have a tummy ache. So I just, I just kind of hook it up here so it just doesn't touch the floor just for a second. Now I'm gonna take the pump. I am gonna open it up. See that circle thing? I'm gonna put this part around the circle thingy. Pull it tight, snap it into place, close it. Pretty simple. Um, to start it, I just press on. It has to load a little bit. So that's how we do that. I'm gonna turn it off, otherwise it's gonna start beeping really loud at us and I don't want that. So now I'm gonna get Kendall. Oh, I got you. So first thing I am going to do is I am actually gonna burp her. So with the Nissan that she had, it's hard to burp her because the flap is extra tight. So air can come up and little burps do come up, but not those big burps that makes your baby feel better. So I'm gonna open this feeding tube part up, put that in. There's just a little bit of water in there because I, I like to rinse it out before and after. And that's how you burp her. Plunger it back in. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab her muscle relaxant and just a little bit of water. Put it through the little tube. I am going to now hook her up. Oh, sorry, pumpkin. Hook her up to the big feed and just prop that in there, unclip it, press on. Everything's the way I like it. Kendall's ready for food, so now. And that's it. So now I'm just gonna wait and have her feed for a little while. Can you give Boo kisses? Give Boo kisses. Mm. So Kendall is getting extremely tired. <laughs> you can see it in her face, <laughs> so cute. But um, yeah, so if she does fall asleep, I can lay her down with the G-Tube pump going as well. Um, it's kind of a positive of having the G-Tube is I can lay her down, I can move her, I can do things with her while she's getting fed. But we still have about half a bag left to me, that's just not that long. I'll probably just wait, clean out a tube, and then lay her down if she does stay falling asleep. If not, that's fine too. Just some extra information. So Kendall's exhausted. I think I'm gonna go lay her down to see if she'll take a nap. Um, this is what happens when the formula is all out. You can see, wow, um, there's no formula left. It stopped right here. You could prime this in, but it's about, I think it was like 20 mLs. It's very, very little, so it doesn't, I don't really bother with it. I'm gonna go clean this out. Um, just stop this because that's obnoxious. Um, just turn it off. I clip this. I unhook it, which takes two hands, I think, usually. And then I'll unclip it and I'll wash water. It's called a flush. I'll wash water right through this so there's not just formula sitting in her tube. Okay, so I got Kendall laid down. I got her tube flushed out with wire, so it's all clean. And she was extremely tired, so she's probably gonna take a little nap. Um, I'm gonna clean this now. Ignore this, we're renovating our kitchen and we're kind of stuck in the middle because of the coronavirus. So we're kind of living with half of our kitchen in the dining room on the floor until we can get that done. So I cleaned out my sink. I'm just gonna fill this up with water. I use pretty hot water. Switch it around. 
I'll do this a couple of times. I just close this back up, make sure no air can get out. Okay. So as you can see, the tube is filled with formula. Don't want. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the teardrop that I used earlier right here to prime the tube to pretty much do exactly the same, just to get all the formula out. Make sure the tube gets all the way clean. Okay, so the water is pretty clear throughout the tube now. And I can leave the water in, but this hot water is hot, so I'd replace it with colder water um, just to get a flush of cold water or just normal warm water, I guess, the warm water through Kendall's tube before the next feed because it actually benefits her to have extra water. And now I have a clean tube. So now I am just gonna hang it up back on the tube rack. I actually connect it all up just so I know that it's all great, just like this. I just took it up, make sure it's not on the ground or anything like that. Thank you guys so much for um, watching. I hope you guys learned something. I hope I answered a lot of your guys' questions. I hope it was educational and everything like that. Um, Kendall is asleep right now, um, so I'm gonna watch her probably get a few things done while she's asleep. Um, if you have any more questions or if I didn't cover something as well as you wanted me to, please comment below. I'll, probably, I'll try to answer all the questions and everything like that. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.